Well, hello there and welcome to day one of the five day painting challenge. If you haven't signed up yet, it's not too late. I'll be posting the link to join the challenge in the comments above this video after we hop off. So if you haven't joined the challenge yet, be sure to check back after the video is over and look in the description above, click that link and hop on in with us. Today, we're going to be talking about how to form habits that will feed into your consistent studio practice. So you want to build a framework around which you can create consistent work within the studio. It takes time to build new habits, and it also takes consistency, because what we're doing is retraining our brain. So our brain controls our patterns of behavior. And a good 90% of what we do really is habit. It's not something that we consciously decide to do, it's habits. Think about when you're driving a car. When you first learn to drive, you have to think about every single step along the way. You have to remember to press, especially if it's a straight drive, press the clutch and the gas, press the clutch and the brake, handle the steering wheel, all of those separate steps at one time. And it can be overwhelming at first. Same thing when you're starting a painting habit or shifting your painting habits. It's gonna take a while for it to become habitual where you don't have to think about it. But the key to it becoming habitual is repeating the same pattern over and over again. So that's why after we drive for a few years, even after just a year, a lot of those steps become habit and we don't have to think about it. So that's what we wanna have happen with our painting practice. So we wanna set up a framework that makes it easy for us to work consistently and have spectacular results as a result. So there's seven steps to forming that habit. And we're gonna go through those steps over the course of the week. And hopefully by the end of the week, you will have set the framework. If you follow along with each step, you'll have it. You'll have set that framework in place so that if you consistently repeat it, you're gonna be able to really hang on to that painting habit. So, hey, Bron from Wales. So nice to have all of y'all joining live with me. So thank you for being here. So let's go through really quickly what these are, and then I'll talk about them individually. Step number one is to set your goal. Know what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Step number two is make it easy to get started. Step number three is establish a cue. Establish cues to help set those rituals and routines. Step number four is develop a standard routine. Step number five is to track your progress. Step number six, make yourself accountable. And step number seven is to reward yourself. That's one that people often leave off, but it is actually one of the most important of them. So let's think about what your goal is. Don't set something that's unrealistic. Set something that's achievable. What's the thing that you wanna concentrate on during the course of the challenge. We've got five days in the challenge. So pick one thing that you wanna work on. It might be coming up with subjects more easily. It might be painting more quickly. That's the overall goal of the, the challenge. It might be painting more loosely, another overall goal. Pick one thing. Don't make it complicated and make it doable and achievable. Make it something you can really have happen. Then print that out, type it in on your computer or handwrite it, make it a sign, make it your screensaver for the week, make it the screensaver on your phone for the week, but put it where you can see it so that it becomes imprinted on your brain and you don't have to think about it, but it's your overarching reaching goal for the week, reachable goal for the week. It could be just the simple act, and it's, it sounds more simple than it really is, but moving from a 40-minute study to a 20-minute study or from a 40-minute study to a 30-minute study by the end of the week. It might be not letting 
painting a short study intimidate you by the end of the week? If you already know what your goal is, go on and type it into the comments here and share what you're going to focus on for the week. That helps you become accountable. And we'll check back in over in the free Facebook group on you during the course of the week. So that's a key point. And here is my handy studio assistant. This is Caesar, who believes that there is no Facebook Live without him present. So this is my very large kitty itty. So he'll be helping us along the way as well. So know that goal, print it out, and put it where you can see it. It's really important to do that. Step number two, and I'm going to run through these pretty quickly and give you just a taste of what we're going to talk about the rest of the week. Um, but I really want to focus on step number two because that's what I want you to do for today. Set your goal and then let's make it easy to get started. Make it super easy to get started. Collect the necessary supplies and have them already set up. If you uh, were already on the challenge list yesterday, then you got my email about um, how you can set yourself up for success. And I'll share that post here again on my page and over in the group as well. Setting yourself up for success in the challenge or in any sort of daily painting project has to do with um, remembering to have fun, I'm going to talk about that in a, again in a, a minute or two, make it fun, make it something where you release the idea that they all have to be perfect, embrace the idea that not all of the paintings in the challenge are going to be good, allow yourself to make some major flubs, when I was working on my painting project last month, I guarantee you I made some flubs, and I, there's one that I went back into four times, don't necessarily need to do that, but you need to know that not all of them are going to be golden, and that's okay, because if you make them less precious, then you give yourself room to play and to explore and to test things and try things out. So remember that exploring and testing is super important. Allow yourself to make some bad paintings. The goal is not to make five perfect paintings. The goal is to make five paintings. If two of them are good, that's fantastic. So working out ideas and allowing yourself to fail is one of the actual ways to succeed. There is no success without failure, so build that in. The third thing that was on that list was to batch. So anything that you can batch ahead of time will help you make it easier to get started. So if you can pick your subjects ahead of time or pick them all today if you're just getting started, crop them, adjust your compositions, have your photos ready to go so that you're not trying to make those decisions on the day that you're painting. Set yourself up with more compositions than you need for five days. You need five. Well, create eight to ten so that you don't have to, on day two or three, go, I really hate this composition I've got set up for today and I don't have anything else ready. I need to go play on the computer first or pull up a new photo. So set yourself up for success by batching. Have all of your surfaces prepped. Use something that's not as expensive, like paper. If you're working in oils or acrylics, you can gesso the paper and paint right on top of it. Give it a couple of coats of gesso, at least two if not three, and you're good to go and you can cut it to any size you want. If you want to use Arches oil paper, if you're using oils, that doesn't need any prep at all. Cut to size, bam, you're ready to start. So batch those things so that you can make it easy. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about establishing cues. Cues are things that are triggers, mental triggers, that help you get in the mood so that you're not having to start from ground zero every day. There are things that tell your brain, now we're in the studio, now we're going to paint. And it can be anything from music to coffee to time of day to um, putting on your painting apron to anything that gets you into that state of mind that now is the time to paint. Then on Wednesday, we're going to be talking about standard routines. You need to set a standard routine. So we're going to talk about how to begin to set up a routine for your painting framework 
so that you know what structure you're going to work within. So often people think that because painters are creative or artists are creative, that they don't have to have disciplines and routines. And the exact opposite is true. In order to paint in flow and to paint freely with confidence and to paint without fear, you have to have a framework in which to run around free. So you can't be free with just a loosey goosey framework. If there's no framework, you don't have anything to hang your hat on. That framework is completely up to you and you need to develop one that works for you. But having a parameter or a box to work within actually sets you free. So we're going to talk about that a good bit on Wednesday. Then on the rest of the week, we're going to be talking about how to track your progress, make yourself accountable and reward yourself. So when tracking your progress, make sure you download the guide that goes along with the painting challenge. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, hop over, join the challenge, and you'll get the link to the guide. The guide has a checklist on the back page that will let you check off when you've accomplished the tasks for the day for the challenge. So make sure you do that. There's a lot of mental reward when you get to check off or cross off things on a list. I'm a list maker. I still like to do it by hand. And it really floats my boat when I get to take my pen and cross something off the list. Then you want to think about making yourself accountable. One of the best ways to do that is to be in a group that's doing the same thing. And we have the free Artwork Living Facebook group here and I'm posting these in there as well. Lots and lots of people, actually over a thousand people in there who are also participating in the challenge. So being accountable and posting every day in there will help you get the job done. So think about joining the group. Then make yourself a reward. So when you're thinking about your goal for the week, think about what you're going to give yourself when you achieve that goal. That helps to motivate you to keep going forward. So we're going to focus on that reward issue a little bit later in the week. So if you have any questions at all about the challenge or about forming habits, remember we're creating like a channel for ourselves to work within so that we can then paint freely and in flow. If you have any other questions, Type them into the comments, and I'll be happy to answer those right now. Let's see. Uh, Ramari says, I need a routine. We all do. Human beings function more effectively, and I don't want to use the word efficiently because that hangs people up. Effectiveness is much more important than efficiency. So human beings function more effectively when they have a routine because it means they don't have to operate on making decisions 24 seven. We only have about 200 decisions that we can make per day. So our brains are hardwired to only be able to handle about 200 decisions a day. If we occupy those decisions with trivial things like, do I paint a five by seven or a six by six? And we have to do that repeatedly day after day. Then we hang ourselves up and we use up some of those vital decisions. You want to save those decisions for the big stuff, not the little stuff. So super important to develop those routines. Carrie Ann says, number two is the most important for me, get going. Yeah, it, it is for a lot of us. I think it, if you can make it easy to get going, it is so much easier to develop new habits. And having all of your stuff to paint ready out and set to go makes it so much easier to paint every day. So I've always told my students, only paint on the days that you eat. There's a catch there. Did you get it? Um, so you need to paint or do something towards your painting practice every day. It doesn't have to be painting a 30 by 40 inch painting. It could be just working in your sketchbook. It could be prepping panels, but you need to do something every day because it sets that routine and habit and it begins to develop that trough or channel that lets it makes it easier for you to achieve your goals. So it's super important to set those routines and habits. 
It's just like if you want to start walking every morning at six o'clock, it's a whole lot easier to do that if you lay out your clothes the night before so that all you have to do when you get up is slide out of bed and put those clothes on and head out the door. If you have to think about what you're going to wear, you're liable not to go walking. Same thing with painting. So you want to make it easy to get started. If you don't have a dedicated studio space, there are still ways to do that. Set yourself up in a corner of your living space. And I would suggest something separate from a kitchen. I don't approve of painting in the kitchen because food and paint don't go together. So if at all possible, in a separate section of your house and put things in containers. A lot of people have to put stuff away every day. Put them in containers that make it easy to pull out and get started so that like things are in like containers. Then it's not any trouble to get going. If at all possible, have it out where all you have to do is shut the door. So make it easy to get started by having your space set up and ready to go. Um, hey, Dorothy, it's good to see you here. And Bethany says, thank you for your encouragement and practical advice. I'm glad that helps, Bethany. Let me know how it goes. Um, Denise says, use my knives instead of brushes. Absolutely. That's a great goal, Denise. So if you want to change up a tool, this is a good way to jump into it and dive into it. So if you've been wanting to try painting knives instead of brushes, this would be a great time to do it. Set that as your goal. Don't worry about anything else. Just focus on getting comfortable with a new tool. Working five days in a row with a new tool is really going to make it a lot easier to make quick progress with that. So I think that's a great goal, Denise. Kudos. That's a wonderful one. Knives are a lot easier to me when working smaller because you don't have to clean them at the end of the day. So anything that takes away um, a chore in, in the painting practice makes life easier and makes it more likely that you'll actually do it. So, hey, Kristen and Joni, it's good to see y'all. And let's see, hey, Lyle, it's good to see you too. And Joe Pace, you're on. And Candy Hogan, good to see y'all. So let me see if I have any other new questions that came in. Um, Ramari says, I found myself stuck when I struggle with something on my painting. For example, I'm currently struggling with a girl's nose. And then I found it hard to sit down and get started again. I don't think that's unusual at all, Ramari. When you run into a roadblock, then it becomes hard to dive back in again because you're anticipating frustration. So my recommendation there is to put that one aside for a little while. And I would still work maybe on that same face, but not that same painting. Take five pieces of paper or five panels, five things that are not super um, precious. Gesso them so that you can paint on them. And then turn that photo of the girl upside down and paint your five paintings this week upside down. When you turn and flip the photograph upside down, doesn't work in light with real life, but it works when you're working from a photo. Um, when you flip it upside down, what happens is your monkey mind lets go of the objectness of what you're painting. And you can paint what you see instead of what you know. So try that out. And I would be willing to bet that that nose problem is going to go away because that's an objectness problem. And when you flip it upside down, you'll see the pattern of values and colors instead of the thingness of what you're painting. So test that out. And when you are working on um, a support that's not super precious, it's gonna take away that fear of failure and help you move past that frustration level. And then when you go back to the painting at the end of the week on Saturday, You'll see it in a whole different way. So doing studies like that is a really great way to get out of um, a studio block. So I'm really glad you asked that question. That's fabulous. Um, Denise, if you didn't get the checklist, check your email because I sent that out um, to the, if you're signed up, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice. Uh, if you signed up for the challenge prompts, then the checklist is on there. So just double check there 
and you should be able to download it. So yeah, Dorothy, this would apply to music too. And if you want to dive into a little bit of painting, head on over and do it. Would love to have you join the challenge as well. Emily says, I use knives on large paintings, but they seem too big for these small panels. Um, not really. I only use knives on those small panels, Emily. Um, and I recommend when you're doing daily paintings that you use the largest tools you've got. It really is a matter of learning how to control the big knife in order to make smaller marks. It's entirely possible. So most of my smaller paintings are done with the large 106 or 109 RGM knife. So it does not mean that you can't use those big knives and small panels. But the size of small, by small, small is fluid. So what is small for me um, might not be small for you or it might be very small for somebody else. Right now, the small size that I'm really most comfortable working on and it changes depending on what size I've been working on a lot. I've been using five by sevens an awful lot over the last couple of months. And I love working that size or four by six because I can work really fast. And the big knife makes it easy to do that because you're covering broad areas then and then I'm done. Um, but I also love working on eight by tens when I'm working really quickly. So make go the smallest size that's comfortable for you. So don't go to four by six if it feels too small. If those knives feel too big for a four by six or a five by seven, then go to a six by eight or an eight by ten. But use paper that's gessoed so that you don't get too caught up in a ten dollar panel and oh my god, if I mess this up, what happens? So um, go as small as you can and still have a degree of comfort. So yeah, Joni upside down really works super well. I'm so glad that helps Vivian. Yes, Emily, right brain, left brain. Exactly. So when I'm talking about monkey mind, that is your left brain. So we have, as humans, we are hardwired to have this real laser focus on objects. It's because we are basically hunters. We're predators. And predators focus in and tighten up on the thing because they want to get it and in order to paint we have to let that go and paint what we see so you have to make a switch from left brain to right brain and the activities that we're doing this week will help you get there it forces the left brain to let go and the right brain to be able to step up and take over those moments when you lose yourself in an activity, whether it's painting or playing music or dancing or writing or any of those sorts of things, that's when your left brain has let go. You lose a sense of time. That's when you get into a flow state and it becomes effortless to do what you're trying to do because you're not making hard decisions with your left brain. It's turned off and your right brain, the more intuitive side, is taking over. That's what we're trying to achieve here. So, yes. Glad that helps, Denise. Definitely go with those knives. Any other questions at all before I hop off and send you all to go paint? Remember, only paint on the days that you eat. I think I have caught all of them. Oops, let me refresh this window on another window because it looks like Facebook is hiding some of the comments. It has a tendency to do that, which then makes it a little hard to see all that's going on there. So I think I've got everything that everybody asked. See all that's going on there. And of course, then it starts to play the video on the other line. Sorry about that, y'all. So it, let's see. Jan says, good to know that you can use acrylics on watercolor paper. Oh, good Lord, yes. I love acrylics on watercolor paper. So if you want to paint on paper, whether you're working with oils or acrylics, you can use watercolor paper. It's going to be different whether you use a rough surface or a smooth surface. So think about whether you want Hot press, which is smooth, or cold press, which is rough. 
I would, in general, say you want the, the hot press, which is smooth. You can also use printmaking or drawing paper. I like to use Stonehenge to work on, which is a printmaking paper. But any of those heavier papers will work. And then you apply three coats of gesso. I like to use at least three because that seals it up so that the paint won't seep through. Super important if it's oils. If it's acrylics, you can get away with one. And then it won't seep through. You can actually use acrylics on ungessoed paper, but it will look more like watercolor. So then you can cut it to whatever size you want to, and it doesn't feel so intimidating because you haven't spent $12 on a panel or on a canvas or something that is super, super expensive. So set yourself up by letting go of the preciousness of that object. It makes it much easier to dive in. So, hey, Jane Wolf, it's good to see you here. Let me know if you have any questions about the challenge. And Donna says, good morning, nice to see you safe. Yeah, as Donna mentions, um, we had a little weather event here in the Southeast this past weekend, not a little weather event. It's still a very large weather event for a lot of people, not where I'm living. So South Carolina and North Carolina uh, greeted Hurricane Florence this past weekend, and it went through Columbia very um, without leaving very many effects behind. We just had rain and some light wind. Uh, just to the north of us, though, has been inundated with water. So special thoughts to all of our friends in the uh, northeastern part of South Carolina and in North Carolina because they have been flooded big time. So um, if you're in that area, I did want to mention that the challenge, which was originally set just to be these five days, the challenge will be open the rest of the month. So if you can't dive in on Monday because you've been inundated with water or you're not at home and you can't get to your paints, just draw for a little while because that'll help you not think about what's going on down there, but you can still come back and do the challenge later. It'll still be available for you. So um, hope that helps. Let's see. But yes, Donna, it is nice here today. We actually, as you can see back out there, we have sunshine, although there is still a lot of mist on the window. You can't really see out my windows right now because of all the moisture and the damp that we had outside. So Things are good here now um, in Columbia. Just to the north, though, lots of flooding. So, Laura, if you're having trouble getting the live feed, just check in later, and you'll do, be able to see that. Lyle says, can I use watercolor for the challenge? Absolutely, you can. You can use watercolor. You can use oils. You can use acrylics. You can use gouache. You can actually use Crayola crayons if you want to. You could just draw for each of the days. It, the medium really doesn't matter. The goal is to get in there and do some stuff. So it could be any of the above. It does not have to be just oil or acrylics. Watercolors are fabulous for small, quick studies. So absolutely dive on into it with watercolor. Definitely. Um, I have started suggesting to all my students that they buy the big box of 64 Crayolas and use those for sketches in their sketchbooks because it's a way to explore color, again, without that preciousness attached to it. So if one of your goals might be that you want to really ramp up the color in your paintings, then testing out using Crayolas in your sketchbook to do some studies might be the way to go because Crayolas address our sense of play real directly because we associate that with being a kid and the pleasure of coloring without having any real rules or guidelines. So I think Crayolas are a fabulous tool for releasing your creativity. So if you're feeling particularly stuck with paint, try a different medium and try one that's not as precious. Try Crayolas. You can also use pastels. There's no limit on what the medium is that you're working in. You could use charcoal or graphite. Again, the main goal is just to get in there and make stuff. They don't have to be perfect. They just need to be done. So, um, great, Deepa. I'm glad those make sense and hope that you can dive into the challenge as well. 
And hello, Ron Dudley and Emily Turner. Good to see y'all here. So let me know if y'all ha have any other questions. If something else comes to mind after we break off, um, be sure to pop a question in here and I'll chat back later. But just to go back through those steps again really quickly, what we're going to focus on this week. Number one, what we covered today was how to form that new habit and looking at all those steps. We're going to create that channel so that we can uh, paint more freely with confidence and not worry so much about perfection. So number one is you want to set your goal. You want to know what you want to achieve during the week, print it out, put it where you can see it. Step number two is to make it easy to get started. Step number three is to establish a cue, a brain trigger that helps you dive in in the correct mindset. Step number four is to develop a standard routine. Step number five, track your progress. Remember, you need to download the guide um, if you've joined the challenge. So the only way to get the guide is to send your email in um, or to sign, register via email because I can't send things to people without their permission. So make sure you do that. Then step number six is to make yourself accountable. And step number seven, reward yourself. So start thinking now about what you're going to give yourself if you complete the challenge. Think about a new tube of paint. That's what I usually reward myself with. A color that I don't normally use or a brush or a knife. Something that's going to be a treat or what we call here in the South a Circe. So pick out a Circe for finishing the challenge. And we'll talk about that again more later this week. So let me see. I think there's one. Now I think I've got all the questions there. So if anything else comes up, pop the question back here um, in this comment thread, and I'll be diving in later to check on that. Happy painting, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye for now.